Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about test-driven development for infrastructure provisioning uh, using CI/CD pipelines for automated provisioning. My name is Lynn Dixon. I'm a manage I'm a senior consultant with the North American Management Practice. And I'm Jared Novotny. I am also a senior consultant with the Management Practice. And I'm Dustin Scott. I'm also with the North America Consulting Management Practice as a managing architect. So what problem are we really trying to solve today? Um, oftentimes when we end up in the field, we notice that um, many, many organizations do have an automated provisioning process. However, they typically are, are oftentimes provisioning in one particular environment, and that is it. So that leads to really problems with uh, delivering the, the, the automated provisioning process in a really reliable manner. Um, we're all human. When we write code, we oftentimes make errors. And if you're if you're an organization that delivers, say, services to either internal or external customers, and you happen to make an error, that error is is very well noticed by those customers. So um, we do have one environment. We, we we obviously keep that consistent, that because there's only one environment. But our goal here is we we really want to separate out environments. We want to have a production environment, which is an operational state, it's tested and vetted, and we want to have a, a development environment to which we can kind of play around with code and write our new code without affecting our operation. So what is CICD? Um, many people probably have uh, are using CICD today or know see what CICD is or maybe are using some CICD processes and don't really know it. Um, the CI portion is what's called continuous integration. Um, it is really a methodology to where we, we have a multi-developer environment and um, let's say Jared, Lynn, and myself are all writing independent code for, for automated provisioning. And we wanna make sure that our code, although we, we have separate branches, doesn't affect one another's code. So typically we use CI tools to, to test the code, you know, maybe lint, lint the code or do some syntax checking. If you're doing Ruby, maybe you have some sort of RuboCop to enforce standards in the code. Um, have that CI tool basically run those types of tests and basically put it into a central branch for us. Um, you'll see a demo later on in this presentation and we're, we're gonna use the dev branch um, while developing code in independent branches to, to sync our central commits to. Um, continuous delivery takes CI just a, just a step further. Um, and this is really taking and really testing the code beyond just linting, you know, where in an automated provisioning process, we want to make sure that we actually do a provision to test that when we make code changes, that provision still works. Um, at the end of that, the, the code is actually ready, ready to be delivered into production. However, it is not automatically delivered into production. If we want to automatically and seamlessly deliver it into production, we actually use the methodology called continuous deployment. And that is the, the code is you know, linted, it's tested, it's delivered, it's deployed directly into production without having a human ever step in the middle of that process whatsoever. Um, for today, we're, we're focused specifically on continuous delivery. We don't quite touch on continuous deployment, but uh, I wanted to make sure that we all knew what all of this meant um, so we have a basis there. So what's our motivation for using CI CD pipelines to manage provisioning? Um, first and foremost, um, we, we, when, we, when we're doing automated provisioning, there are business needs that, that, that exist and they change very, very rapidly. So um, in order to meet um, business demand, we want to uh, develop new code in an agile fashion so that the new code makes its way all the way to production quickly and rapidly and uh, efficiently and make sure, making sure there's no problems with it. Um, second, we want to make sure we track changes with that code. Um, we, 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 there's two different tools we can use, really, um, in our process here today. Um, one of those tools is Git, in which we can actually track line by line changes in the code. We can actually see individual line changes in that code. Um, the other tool is the, the CI tool that we're using. It's called Jenkins, that mo most people are probably familiar with. And Jenkins can actually track uh, stages, and you can actually time the stages of that code. So if it's you know one commit maybe lasts five minutes for provisioning and the next commit maybe introduces uh, a five minute delay and it takes 10 minutes to provision then obviously we've introduced inefficiencies in the code that we want to be able to track 
Um, we're also implementing procedures to review, approve, and test the code. So this is basically you know, enforcing the fact that we have to implement process around code, that it doesn't just get jammed into production without having any sort of oversight on it whatsoever. Um, and finally, the ultimate goal is once the code's been approved and tested and reviewed, um, we've developed it, all that's happened, that we finally deliver it into an operational state, into production. As far as provisioning goes, there, over my, my time in this career field, I've seen many, many different ways to provision. There, there isn't a right or wrong answer. All organizations do it differently. Um, as far as Red Hat's concerned, we do have three really main products that, that deliver traditional infrastructure provisioning. Um, today, you're going to see Cloud Forms and Tower and an integration between those. Um, Red Hat Cloud Forms is a tool commonly used to address self-service provisioning into, into virtual infrastructures. Ansible Tower is really, really a, a full-fledged automation engine that can automate almost anything, but one of its key use cases is actually to do automated provisioning. Um, finally, Red Hat Satellite is specifically used to manage uh, RHEL infrastructures, and Satellite specifically uses Kickstart and, and Pixie as a way to um, automatically provision new systems. 